Hi, my name is Robert. I'm a junior at Illinois Tech, and I've been going to Park South Loop for three years. So growing up, um, it was me. Uh, I had two younger brothers, they're twins, and then my dad and mom. I think it was about age 10. Uh, we were, it was around that time where we were going through various um, doctor appointments and seeing different doctors because my mom, uh, she had like a lot of headaches and they found out she had cancer um, behind her eye. And the cancer traveled from like behind her eye to her brain to her spine. By the spine, it was um, pretty tough at that point. So after about three years, um, the summer after my eighth grade year, um, she ended up passing away. I remember, I think one thing I really remember about my mom dealing with the situation was just her as resiliency and also like not only that but like she never abandoned like her trust in God um, even like through the whole process like she was still volunteering at our church at the church office I think that's one thing like I do definitely remember about that time is where she still like stayed faithful um, with God even though like the circumstance definitely wasn't good Really, a lot of our faith was seen with her trying to um, instill the same values as me and my brothers as we were growing up. Uh, we have like Bible verses like printed out and posted on the fridge, uh, different, just different things like that where uh, just seeing her uh, continual commitment uh, to making sure that me and my brothers like had a good foundation. Really for like the, a lot of the summer, it wasn't really completely real to me yet. Like I had to deal with the fact that like God, um, like he took her away and like as people like were telling me, it'll be okay, like just be patient in the process, like God's working. I didn't know how to process that information. I was like, well, uh, he told me he's handling it, but then she died. So like, is he gonna do it again? What if it's my brothers? What if it's my dad? It's like, if my dad, I have no other parents left. So I really had to struggle with that. And I didn't know like really what to believe at that point. I still like believed in God. I was like, is he still looking out for me like in every way? Or is it kind of out to fend for myself a little bit? I really, the way that I ended up trying to as cope with um, feelings of being very angry, very sad, um, very confused, well, I just decided to really throw any emotion away, um, whether all the negative ones and really the good ones too. And you get tired of not feeling anything. I was so pain was my next response. Um, I did things like I didn't eat. I think one time I went like three days without eating, um, just feeling pain of something, um, anything at all. And kind of after feeling, going through this pain for so long, as I wanted some type of escape and Really, that's kind of when, I think when I got to sophomore year, really when kind of like a suicidal thought started becoming a self-harm, um, suicidal type thoughts. I was at the point where I was feeling hopeless and purposeless, and I had had, I felt like I had no really other options left, so um, I thought like, all right, so my response to not feeling anything before is like kind of going through pain, so I decided, well, either it's time where I can just, I can die and kind of see my mom again, or I can like not do it and just be injured and maybe people will care um, if I'm injured, uh, things like that. But like I sat there and I was crying in my room. Um, I had like my scissors. I sat there just really like pondering like what, like what's gonna happen after I do this, all the scenarios that could happen and then uh, that's when my dad came in and uh, sat with me, uh, just like took it, took the scissors away, and just uh, sat and prayed and tried to comfort me. And and I really don't know like what caused my dad to come through. Uh, it might have just been him listening to the Lord. I just remember him staying there to comfort me through that kind of process where I was pretty much hopeless. Um, he ended up taking me to therapy the next morning. So that's kind of how that night went. And I never tried to attempt something like that again after that night, but I had to sit down and really just think through life, like what needs to change in my life, and even remembering um, the example that my mom set as she was alive. I remember that example because even in the last week um, she was alive, I was helping take care of her. 
just hearing her talk about um, Christ and her commitment to that, I was like, well, but if she could do it, then like I can try it. And I prayed to him, I said, like, she did it. So I kind of want I want to see, like, can you help me? I don't even know like what completely brought me to that point. Like I know, I knew the transition was for real when um, my grandmother, um, she ended up passing away as well. Um, but like that was a, like, it was a really sad day. And like my whole family, like, we were coming together, but like I realized like I didn't have the same kind of hopeless responses before. Like I kind of saw it differently. And even at that point, I kind of wanted to use the pain from losing my mother to really comfort and help the others who are still going through that same pain and even um, helping others like around me, friends and family that might be going through tough situations and really trying to help them as well. That's kind of how my response changed. My life wasn't really like focused on me and making sure that everything was uh, fine and dandy for myself, but really changed my perspective to really living for Christ, I think, would say. I think like another big step of growth that I've taken recently, uh, I became a member um, at Park South Loop, even over, it was just this last break, uh, so during December. So that was a pretty big step for me, just being out on my own. I'm a junior now, so I've been gone for about three years, but uh, just taking that step of faith uh, to see like what God um, can further do in my life.